Hi, welcome back. I got a quickie for you. Um, another bizarro dream, outer space dream uh, that I don't know what to make of, but it was very entertaining, very, very realistic. Um, just when I'm out there in space, I swear I'm out. I'm really out there. It's it's really something. Um, I got a good view of Earth in this dream that was just like, wow, Earth was so big because I was in this little spaceship looking back at Earth. But let me let me not get too far ahead of myself. So I texted my mom with the details of the dream, which I will relate to you from the text. It's right on my phone right here. Um, I wrote to her, wow, the weirdo dreams continue, continue. This time I was on a shuttle, uh, a little spaceship, like not like a American shuttle, not, not like those things, but like more like a spaceship. A Star Trek-y kind of shuttle, like with four or six people in it, like a t tiny kind of little box ship, really. Um, I was on a little sh spaceship visiting a space station above Earth. Um, it was, I think, it was more of a futuristic space station, like not the current International Space Station. And the reason we were sent there was to help an astronaut who had an injury of some kind. So maybe we were going to bring this person back to Earth. Not sure. When we got to the space station, one of the other people there said that she was visiting the space station from a nearby space hotel, and she asked if we wanted to go and see it. So we said, okay. And um, the pilot of our ship was uh, a woman, so I figured you'd want to know that, Diane, you know, women in charge. So we got back in the ship, and we flew over to the space station, but it was weird because then space was kind of murky like you couldn't see very far ahead in front of the ship um which i don't think would really happen anywhere near earth because it's not like there's nebula or other sort of like um you know dust dust clouds in space that would make it hard to see but in the dream it was hard to see and like as we approached the space hotel which was near the space station. It was, it was sort of like a floating round structure with like, um, you know, like it had rings and the middle section was the largest, almost like a top. It almost looked like a top, you know, with like a sort of a needle through it in the top and the bottom. And it had um, little blue track lights leading up to it, but they were just literally just floating in space, um, like, like runway lights. But as I said, as we approached it, it, it was like, wow, it's kind of like hard to see, almost like we were looking at it through a cloud. But there wouldn't be clouds up that high in space, so I don't know what that's about. It was mysterious. So we're taking this woman to her space hotel, and um, as we're going over, uh, there are a lot of rocks, big rocks floating outside the ship on the trip over, like... You know, just asteroid or not asteroids. I mean, just they, they don't become astro asteroids until they fall to Earth. Right. Yeah. Anyway, we, we floated through a field of, of space rocks and some of them were really big. They were almost as big as the ship. And there was one that was that was coming right towards our little ship. And in the dream, I thought, wow, this is it. We're going to collide with this thing. And this is the end of my life but hopefully it'll be quick. <laughs> so I closed my eyes tight and I said a prayer and um and we were we were fine because I I guess in zero gravity um it just sort of bounced lightly off the ship and bounced off. I don't know if that would really happen up there. And the other stones, the other rocks that were floating in space were too small to to hurt the ship. So it wasn't a problem, but it was strange you know because it was so specific the detail um so i wrote we um we passed through other smaller debris without issue the space hotel was very small and had blue track lights floating in space so you could see where it was so you could park but we didn't stop there we we passed by it i don't know why we didn't stop we passed by it and this is when i could see back towards earth because we kind of made like a uh, like a cur we kind of curved around it and then as we were curving around the space hotel that's when 
earth appeared in my vision and it was just huge so big it was like how do i describe it it was so big that as i was looking out the window of the spaceship all i could see was about a quarter of it do you know what i mean i could only see like the top quarter and i could see the the blueness of the ocean and I could see the land, the land masses, the continents. And this is something I've seen in other dreams too. It, it almost appeared like it had digital projections on top of it in green, like almost like, like markings that you might put on it. If you were trying to like navigate to it or navigate to a specific place on it, like, it was like an over, I don't know if it, was, if it was an overlay, like that we were seeing on our screens, like looking at the earth, or if it was actually like sort of projected onto the earth somehow so that other alien, like alien civilizations or other spaceships would know where things were in a really easy way. So it was Earth, and then it was like almost like it had like a sort of like dome around it with markings, green markings, elect electronic, sort of an electronic field around it. Again, not sure what that was about, but the, again, just coming around that curve and seeing the scale of it, I just, it did take my breath away in the dream. So real. And so we hook around the other side of the space hotel, and... um the pilot was a little off course and then it was like these three smaller spaceships that look like outdated old technology they were trying to intercept us after we passed the hotel but they were like clumsy and they were kind of banging into each other <laughs> like so i could see like out the back of the spaceship these ships trying to catch up to us that were about the same size but they were inept excuse me they were not being piloted well, and then and the tech tech wise, they didn't seem to be able to keep up with us. So that was weird. Um, and I thought maybe they were alien ships and they were trying to protect their space, but yet we were near Earth. You know, we were really just above orbit and Earth, so I don't know why that would be. A lot of mysteries in this one that aren't solved, unfortunately. So sorry about that. Um, and then when these ships really couldn't keep up with us, they just, eventually they just dropped back. They fell back and we kept going. And as we were continuing to kind of round our way, like, I don't know if we were heading back towards earth yet or what was going on, but we saw in front of us another ship. And what was interesting was another small ship. We could, uh, at least, I, I don't know if everybody could, but I could see like right into the ship. It was almost like having x-ray vision or the ship itself had transparent sections and i could see that in in this again another small ship there were three human women in it and um <coughs> excuse me well i wrote uh one small ship with three women in it managed to kind of wedge itself in front of us and um i don't know if they were trying to get our attention or not maybe so and it turned out that the women in this ship were former astronauts who left Earth to be left alone, um, away from people. And our pilot, the, our female pilot, recognized one of them as a terminally ill woman who had disappeared mysteriously from Earth. And it turns out that she had wanted to die in space with her friends instead of on Earth. <clears throat> excuse me and like i said i wrote i could see inside the ship and it was so small it was like the sleeping area and the ship controls were in the same space because the women were zipped up in like a big sort of sleeping bag type um thing and also piloting the ship at the same time and um since they didn't apparently really want to be interfered with we we left them be and that's all I learned about them. And um, and again, 
it was so dark out there in space. Like it, we had passed through the sort of cloudy section that was near the space hotel, but it was so dark. I thought, what the hell else is hiding out here in space that we can't see? Um, and um, let's see, I wrote, and I wanted to get back to the space station because at least the space station, not the space hotel, because at least we knew where that was and we probably wouldn't run into anything else hiding in space. But um, that's when the dream ended. So I don't know if we went back to this to the space station. I don't know if we ever uh, stopped in at the space hotel. I don't know what became of any, any of the other beings and ships around us. But um, I just wish I could really impart the vividness of it to you. It's That's what makes these so much fun. But then I guess your own imagination will fill in some of it too. So that was pretty fascinating. So that was, you know, two really interesting nights of dreams in a row. And my mom wrote back, I can't believe the details and full story your dreams contain. And I said, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're definitely whole stories. And then she wrote, oh, <laughs> she, wrote, she wrote, what were you wearing? I'm just curious. And I wrote, I think just normal clothes, like we didn't need space suits. So, but I don't have any recollection of really what I was wearing. Um, so, I don't know why she asked that or why that came to her mind. And that's it. That's all I got. I got no further explanation of what that's about. Comments always welcome. Sorry to leave it as a kind of cliffhanger. If I have a sequel uh, with any new information about <laughs> those people hanging out there in space at the Space Hotel or uh, or anywhere else, I will get back and let you know. Okay, talk to you soon. Take care.